what has lately become known as post-truth politics. It is absolutely of no concern to Mr Dreyfus that he will lie through his teeth, that Mr Dreyfus is prepared to lie and lie again, to make things up, to fantasise, to make the most reckless and offensive allegations, with no facts to support him whatsoever. As I explained in the detailed and very full statement that I've just given to the Senate, at all times, Commonwealth ministers, including me, acted to protect the interests of the Commonwealth. We acted on Solicitor General's advice. The interests of the Commonwealth were protected. Uh, the uh, Commonwealth's position, uh, the, the position that Commonwealth took in relation to the Income Tax Assessment Act, which was the issue before, the principal issue before the High Court, was resolved on uh, terms favourable to the Commonwealth. It's time for Mr Shorten and Mr Dreyfus to stop playing the politics of smear, to stop engaging in serial lying, to stop in, in indulging themselves in post-truth politics, and to start focusing on real issues that matter to Australian families. Senator, what does it say about the administration of the Abbott and then the Turnbull governments that a treasurer can appear to enter into a deal which is not communicated to any other minister or documented? Well, I can only say what I know. And what I know, what I learned in March of this year, uh, is that there was an exchange of correspondence between the then Federal Treasurer and the Treasurer of Western Australia. I tabled that correspondence. Uh, in my view, that correspondence, as I said in my statement, does not constitute or evidence a deal. Does this call into question Ambassador Hockey's credibility and should he be recalled? No, it doesn't at all, not slightly. But the, the, as I said in response to your colleague, the, the evidence we have of the discussion or discussions between Mr Hockey and Dr Nahan uh, is that contained in the exchange of letters of April 2015, which do not evidence, let alone constitute, an agreement. You said that you'd shown your statement to Kelly O'Dwyer and Christian Porter and the Beta President. Um, did you show the statement to Joe Hockey uh, or have you spoken Well, look, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to go into what discussions I may or may have had. Um, I was um, very eager today to give a thorough factual uh, account of these events because so much... Um, uh, dishonesty, so much um, misinformation has been maliciously uh, propagated by Dr Mr Dreyfus and Mr Shorten. So th now that the facts are on the table, the sequence of events is on the table, who said what to whom uh, and, when, uh, and when relevant events occurred has been dealt with methodically in the statement that I made. I hope that now the public will see through Mr Dreyfus and Mr Shorten. Senator, 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 one of the main Senator, allegations Senator, last Senator. week was that you effectively told Justin Gleeson to run dead in the High Court. That is not, well, I, that is not the truth, and he did not. Senator, Senator you, didn't outline, you didn't outline, did you, the instructions that you gave to Mr Gleeson, or did I miss that? Well, I, <laughs> Mr Gleeson was instructed to appear, he was already appearing on behalf of the Australian Taxation Office, and uh, that was the main issue in the case, uh, an issue about whether the Western Australian Act was consistent with federal tax law. And the argument that he ran and which succeeded was that it wasn't. And the Western Australian Act was struck down on that basis. Mr Gleeson also was of the view, which I accepted, that there should be... Um, that the Commonwealth of Australia, as opposed to the Australian Taxation Office, should intervene in the proceedings in case it became necessary to argue a different legal point, a point about the Corporations Act. Now, ultimately, the basis upon which the case was decided by the High Court was entirely about the first point, that is, whether there was an inconsistency between the Western Australian State Act and Commonwealth Revenue Law. The second point, the point concerning which Mr Gleeson, out of, in a sense out of abundant caution, wanted the Commonwealth to intervene, in which I instructed him uh, to intervene, having considered his advice, um, uh, 
was did, was not considered by the court in its reasons for decision. My question was saying that um, uh, in, in your involvement in these events, there was no negative impact on your relationship with Solicitor General Police. Okay, it was not affected by the by the uh, course of Ms. these events, or what? The, no, Mr. Gleeson. Um, I don't. I don't think so. Uh, Mr. Gleeson had some views about whether the Commonwealth should intervene um, in its own right to argue a point about the Corporations Act. I thought that the case would be decided on the main point, that is, the Income Tax Assessment Act point. That is, in fact, what ultimately happened. But nevertheless, Mr. Gleeson put to me a view, and having considered what he said to me, I accepted his view, and that's what we did. Thank you. Attorney General uh, George Brandis there speaking a little while ago.